Today, <clears throat> I want to talk to you about spiritual bypassing. What I mean about <clears throat> bypassing or spiritual bypassing, it simply means that you are talking or you're saying that you're spiritual. You've read all the right books, you've been to all the right lectures, you visited all the right gurus, you know, you have uh, spent thousands upon thousands of dollars on the right ashrams, but you don't have a direct spiritual relationship with the spirit. You're bypassing the spirit. And I see this in my work with people and in the community more and more and what we have instead of actually directly experiencing the spirits or directly having a relationship with spirit we have talking about the spirit or about having a relationship with the spirit um, I have done many many videos here and um, a lot of posts on Facebook on social media about this problem of uh, spiritual bypassing and I've given a lot of examples of how to fix this because it doesn't really matter how many quotes you remember it doesn't really matter how many books you have read or how many at the feet of how many gurus you have prostrated yourself what matters and what really heals is a direct communication, direct experience of the spirit, of the soul, of the divine, being touched by that. So, um, I will read you a little bit of uh, what Peter Kingsley uh, wrote about this problem, then I'll read you some of my own things that I have written about it. So far to say that uh, we can call this, uh, you know, spiritual bypassing is also a religion where you are uh, not allowed really to have your own personal direct experience with the divine. You need priest to mediate on your behalf. So you're cut off from having a direct experience. <clears throat> we can also talk about this as an imitation of people running around imitating the way of Christ, which is religion, imitating the way of Jung, or imitating the way of the Buddha. And if you, when you're imitating, you can't, you simply, it's a mechanical thing it's not spontaneous it doesn't happen by itself and it's when it happens by itself when you have these um, intuitive insights these dreams that just you know pop into your nightly adventures when you suddenly uh, catch words on tv or on radio when you're stuck in traffic these are the things that make that connection possible because they they, they, they open you up to further deepening your relationship with the spirit. So, uh, but when you're imitating someone, imitating their way, which by the way was also a spontaneous way. Buddha never, you know, if you remember, I've made a videos about this before, but Buddha, you know, when he found that he couldn't uh, find what he was looking for amongst the best gurus in the forest, he went off and he had his own mystic uh, visions. <clears throat> he almost died. He, he, he didn't eat. He ate hardly anything. He was so anticipated that uh, uh, he was so thin that he was on the brink of, of dying and it didn't bring him enlightenment. So he went off and sat under the Bodai tree and then he fought with the uh, survival instincts and he finally you know, gave up to uh, uh, f fought off the 
uh, egos and, and in all the assaults on, 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 on him by the monster Mara and his inner eye opened and bang and he was in and he saw what he needed to see. It's the same situation with Christ. He went to um, uh, John the Baptist, the, the highest spiritual guru of that time and he was baptized in the Jordan River. But he also didn't uh, find what he was looking for. So he went off to the desert on his own experiences, mystic experiences, direct mystic experiences. After that, he returned and he started his teaching career. And the same with Jung. Jung had to break up with Freud. And only after that breakup did he actually have his own way of doing things. Freud was insisting uh, that, that Jung follows his teachings, you know, his, his discoveries. Uh, it had to be a mechanical way, but Jung said no, and it's a huge, uh, it was a huge uh, psychological breakup for him, you know. Uh, so that's important to understand that if you follow Jung's uh, way, that was Jung's way, it's not your way, not, you know, imitator Jung is, it's not helpful to you, it might be, you know, I know people that are to this day just drawing mandalas, working with stone, rearranging stone, reading all the alchemical books and so on, but if this is not your way, your own intuitive way, spontaneous way, it's not going to be any help to you. It doesn't have the value of that spontaneous finding, that spontaneous moving you, you know. You don't have that direct connection, a relationship with the spirit, if you are just mechanically copying and pasting someone else. This is spiritual bypassing, you see. So there are, and, and I've given so many different examples of how to do it, and you have to find your own way to do it. You can just simply just start by asking a question that you want an answer to and staying with that question and watch your daily environment, your everyday environment for answers. There will be a word caught here on TV, there will be a word caught on the radio while you're stuck in traffic. Words uh, that you read, might read a book. It doesn't have to be the best-selling spiritual books or even mythological books. You just open up a book, read the first sentence, and there might be an answer right there. Sometimes even on the cover of the book, just the title. It does not have to be anything really uh, uh, sophisticated or complicated. Yeah? All right, so I'm going to read you now what Peter Kingsley wrote about this. And this is to do with uh, uh, philosophy. And philosophy is um, um, uh, a love of wisdom. That's the word what it means. And we can actually say about spiritual bypassing as uh, uh, Main Street psychology as well. Psychology, the word psychology is composed of psyche and ology. Psyche is so Psychology is study of soul, but mainstream psychology, if you were to come to them, for instance, with, with the, you having such big dreams and they wake you up at night, you have visions or you intuitively uh, uh, hearing voices, they would start to actually cure you from this, might give you drugs to suppress this gift. You see, they would throw out the baby with the bathwater. So this is where we live right now. We're in a, live in a society which is obsessed with rationalism, with thinking, with collecting facts, or, you know, scientific uh, deductionism. You read so many things and eventually you find that uh, these things correlate with these things and then you make your conclusion, which by the way, it's not really just your rational mind that makes that conclusion, but your intuition that is actually eventually telling you that all this connects together. But of course you can't argue that with a scientist, they don't believe in intuition. Or Main Street psychologists. They'll give you strong drugs and say, oh, you yeah, know, there's a problem with you. You're not doing what you're supposed to, you're malfunctioning. Okay, so I'll read you what uh, Peter Kingsley has to say about this. So just bear with me. Okay, so he's talking about philosophy. The, uh, the basic meaning of philosophy is love of wisdom. See, that's what I said. That means very little anymore. We have plenty of room in our lives for knowledge and data, for learning and information, yeah? Amusement and entertainment, but not wisdom. Wisdom means 
uh, Sophia. You know, she is the wisdom. She is your intuition wisdom. This is this is how things are now. And yet they weren't always like that. We can still trace out how well over 3,000 years ago the schools of Plato and Aristotle put the seal on what was to become the most enduring uh, Athenian contribution to intellectual history in the West. So he's talking about the rational mind here. Now, instead of the love of wisdom, philosophy turned into the love of talking and arguing about the love of wisdom. That's what I said before, right? Yeah. Since then, the, take, uh, the talking and arguing, arguing have pushed everything else out of the picture. Until now, we are no, until now, we no longer know anything else or can imagine that this, that this should be. See? Spiritual bypassing. Spiritual bypassing is simply this, bypassing the direct relationship with the spirit. You're talking about the spirit. You're talking about someone else's relationship with the spirit, but you're not having a relationship with the spirit yourself. Okay, so I've given you lots of examples of how to do this. Um, uh, it's not difficult to do. Uh, it requires taking a leap of faith, if you like. I call it the leap of intuition, spontaneity. Hmm? Nature is spontaneous. When you go to a field and you see all the flowers growing there, do you think that one that flower over here asks the next door flower how to bloom? It just does from itself. There's a famous uh, quoted sermon by the Buddhists. They like to use this example with the Buddha. Uh, was asked to give a sermon about something and when all his disciples came around and were sitting around him and he arrived and he just lifted the flower. Only one of his uh, followers nodded his head and knew what was going on. The others needed a sermon. So this is where we are. Only few, very, very few of us know what's going on. The rest of us read about it. Okay? The rest of us hear about it, talk about it. Yeah? It is really only the true poets, the very few true poets that have a connection to the Spirit, that Spirit talks to them. They have a relationship, direct relationship with God. Everybody else really is just reading about it, talking about it, or running around from here to there to everywhere, trying to find it. Not, realize, not realizing that it's already within them. Okay, so that's all I wanted to talk to you about today. Just a short, another short video uh, about spiritual bypassing. Okay, thank you. See you next time. Bye.